I start out by saying that um, when I was five years old, I was walking home from kindergarten with a little friend of mine. And there had been a birthday in our kindergarten class that day. And we'd all been given these lollipops. So on the way home, we were eating our lollipops. And as we got close to my house, I happened to notice that my friend had lollipop all over her face. Many colors of lollipop all over her face. And she looked really funny. And so I invited her to come back to my house because I wanted to show her face to my mom. <laughs> she didn't want to come. But I said, please, please come back to my house. I want to show my mom your face. You look funny. And kids, kindergartners don't have much uh, uh, filter. But anyway, she, she did not want to come. So in, to encourage her, I was going to put my hand on her back and eat, I think just pat her on the back to encourage her to come. Maybe I was going to shove her. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but anyway, as I did this, my hand was also sticky from my lollipop, and it stuck in her hair. And as I tried to pull my hand out of her hair, she started to cry. Now, I was ready to go home at this point, so I started heading home with her hair stuck to my hand, and I was pulling her you know, to come to my house. And not, at that point, I'd kind of given up on my invitation. But I was pulling her, and she was crying harder. And with that, my mother came out on the porch, and she looked down, and she said, Babs, what are you doing? I was just inviting her back to our house, Mom. And she came out, and she calmed my friend down. She got my hand untangled from her hair, and she sent her on her way home. And then she took me into the house, and explained to me why I should not ever do anything like that again. That's the day I learned how not to invite. I hope you've learned something too. I think that little girl never did come to my house, and she might not have ever walked home with me again either. Well, last week we discussed why it is important to invite people to church. This week, we will be talking about how you can invite people. The people in your life to come to your church. Inviting is not dragging people in by their hair, but it is also not a sales gimmick. An invitation absolutely must come from a place of genuineness and relationship. Real impactful evangelism absolutely must come from a real and impactful relationship with the person you wish to invite. This means listening to them and opening up your own heart in a true and vulnerable way. The fundamental listening, sorry, the fundamental truth is that Christ uses us to touch the people around us. And the only way we can do that is to be befriending them so with that said, how can we effectively invite the people into our lives in St. James? First, you want to let them know what service you're going to be attending. And uh, that can be an intimidating experience coming to a new church, especially an Episcopal church where our liturgical pageantry can be overwhelming. Having a friend by your side helping to guide you can change the entire experience and possibly put them at ease about attending to begin with. If you know any mutual friends who attend St. James or members of a mutual community, looping them in may also be a way to increase the feeling of community before they ever set foot on church grounds, offering them a ride to come with you if, if they are inclined to come. Uh, keep it low pressure. Some level of persistence can be helpful in keeping the idea of joining you for a church alive in someone's mind. However, the moment that someone feels that you are trying to convince them or to manipulate them, they will shut down. This makes sense, right? Uh, the scariest part of buying a car or anything is the salesman trying to get you to buy it, especially if it seems like they really want you to buy it. Remember, your relationship with this person is what's valuable, and God can use you to touch their life, even if that isn't in church. So invite them, but be sure to reiterate that your feelings won't be hurt if they choose to decline. You can mention your church experience in passing. 
Bringing up your church activities in casual conversation is a great way to gauge a person's interest. This may seem overly subtle, but you, wouldn't probably, but you would probably be surprised who asks you follow-up questions. It can also be helpful to bring up how being a part of a faith community has changed your life and your walk with God. If you know what the message is about that week, work that into the conversation. Again, genuineness is key, so never try to shoehorn this into the conversation, but keep in mind if the opportunity arises. You can use these invite business cards. I love these. Be, be our guest with all this wonderful information on the back. Now, here is a thought I have. You, you should know the person, that's great. But if you have one of these decals in your window of your car and a stranger comes up to you in the parking lot and says, gee, what a pretty church, or where is this church, or is that where you go, or any, they ask you any kind of a question, please invite them. You don't have to know them to do that. But if you have one of these handy, you can give them this. Be our guest. They can look up everything they need to know about our church on the back. Okay, so um, some people use, use, need to think about your invitation before deciding whether to accept. Some may even want to do a little independent research before agreeing to attend to a worship service. If your guest is one of those people, the business card will provide all the information necessary to review our webs website and other resources for more information. At the very least, the business card could be a tangible reminder of your invitation every time your guest happens to see it. Take advantage of low stakes social events and ministries. The church is more than just the Sunday morning service. Inviting someone to church may also look like inviting them to meet and hang out with others in the church at events like the church picnic, the men's fish fry, or the annual pig roast. They, almost, they also may feel more comfortable joining one of our ministries, such as grief support, dementia support, Alpha, Stephen ministry, or Episcopal church women. All of these could be great ways to invite someone without the pressure of a Sunday morning service. I've had great luck asking friends to come and see our uh, Last Supper, or the Women Who Knew Jesus, or our um, Christmas program. The key here is relationship. You are not going to sell someone into becoming a member of the church. You are inviting them to join you in your walk with Christ, in a community of believers doing the same. So use these tips to the extent that they are helpful. And if all else fails, Maybe you should offer them a lollipop. <laughs> Thank you.